<laughs> Hi everybody. Um, we wanted to give you an update on the Vegas outreach. Um, this is Abby. This is Abby McKee. So when you send a dream in or when you have a personal dream, she is the one who's doing it. It's me. It's her. So uh, we wanted to tell you a little bit about kind of what we experienced uh, in Vegas. First, I want to say that if we state that we're having an outreach to Vegas, we're in Vegas. <laughs> okay, so that actually came up. You are sure? you in Vegas? <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, mm -hmm. we are. So, um, and we were at the adult convention. So, Avian is Adult Video Network. And uh, if you're following any of the stuff, we've I've been on, I don't know how many different, you know, um, TV show or not TV shows like video uh, shows and people's uh, websites and stuff stating talking about the fact that we go into these places so when you know we were there uh, and we're at the adult convention you need to know that's where we are so um, anyway we are uh, gonna give you a little bit of update um, just in Abby's gonna share and I'm gonna share so this is kind of new for us I haven't done like a, a part you know a thing tag teaming tag teaming mm -hmm. so I'll, she doesn't share well <laughs> that's a lie I'm just kidding <laughs> I do it when I can <laughs> um, anyway so the first few days were rough mm -hmm. uh, the first day or two actually was rough the uh, registration was very confusing uh, people, I got my uh, registered, I had registered and got my badge way before they did. The line was really long, um, and it was in a new venue, so people were really confused about where to go. Um, it seemed as if they had a lot of stuff um, in different rooms that was a mistake, like they, they put a bunch of people in places that they didn't belong. So um, the the people who had been to this event uh, this is year 13 for me. I think it's year two or three for Abby. Mm -hmm. So we had a, a bit of a, a finger on the pulse of um, what this is supposed to look like, what this is supposed to be like. And so it was very confusing. Um, that seemed to me, um, there was just like a fog over people's heads, right? So, and, and it, it just seemed much darker to me mm -hmm. than previous years, which we knew this was going to happen, you know. Jesus told us, or you know, we see in Isaiah 60 uh, that darkness will cover the earth, deep darkness will cover people. Well, deep darkness is definitely there, and they seemed very hopeless. They seemed like they, um, you know, they just were uh, kind of they were there but not there, right? So they were going through the motions and doing all the stuff. Um, and when we would talk to them, it was it took me a minute to try and really connect with them and let them know this is something we do every year. We come in and we give back. We do dream interpretation. We do readings. We, I did some uh, spiritual organic alignments, which was kind of cool because they were like, oh my gosh, you know. So we've got video of a lot of the encounters. And when we have that, we'll explain kind of how they were impacted. A lot of them seem to have come out of a, either a pastor's home or out of a church setting. Um, they, you know, they were, they had been in church. It's it's what we hear uh, at Burning Man. Same thing. Um, I went there. It. I got hurt. I got, you know, shamed. I got whatever. And I'm not bashing the church because we pastored for, you know, 35 years. Um, but I'm telling you, there's just a lot of stuff that needs to happen within church to make people feel like, you know, it's a place they can get help, mm -hmm. not that a place they can get judged. And so, but we heard this, we heard it firsthand. And so, you know, we're try trying to give everyone an idea, an understanding of what they're saying, not what we're saying, not what we're perceiving, you know. So anyway, when they found out that they do have a, a life, a destiny apart from, um, this, you know, industry, they, they lit up, they wanted to hear more. They, they, you know, were very interested in, in hearing, um, what we saw, you know, I said, not only do we read dreams, we read people. So, um, and for me, I think the, um, you know, I was talking to, uh, Josh and a few other uh, members and I said, what is it this year? Is it dreams? Is it readings or is it touch? And it seemed like it was touch. Mm -hmm. 
So, um, and when you got a hold of them, uh, they felt the power of God. They felt the Holy Spirit. They felt mm -hmm. uh, Jesus, um, you know, uh, touch them. So um, that was really good. You know, we just, we, we were like, well, <laughs> we're just going to do it God's way, right? However he wants to do it. And the training, you know, that we do is like, what do you, God, what do you want to do? Not, mm -hmm. not what do we want to do or what worked last time, you know? Right. So. Yeah. Yes and amen. No. <laughs> um, we had incredible favor, I think, this year. It was it was pretty amazing because I felt like we knew a little bit more than what most of them who were there knew. You know, we were kind of seasoned veterans, and they were scrambling because there were so many new young people there. Um, it was hard for them to kind of get a grip on what was going on. We had a lot of teeth falling out dreams. Yeah. A lot of people in transition. They didn't really mm -hmm. know what was going on. Uh, like Cindy said, touch, touch was huge. Um, you know, we got our hands on them and they were feeling something. Um, the darkness that you mentioned, there was uh, one girl in particular, I was able to get my hands on her <laughs> in a nice way. I would say that. It's awful. <laughs> I was able to get my hands on her. Um, and she had this encounter. Uh, and when she opened her eyes, she said, wow, everything is, uh, it's, it's much more vibrant in here but it's darker. And I said, yeah, and you need to be in places of light. And yeah. so she was able to see whether she realizes exactly what was going on there. The Lord opened her eyes. She told me when um, I had my hands on her that her eyes were doing something funny. Yeah. yeah. So I knew that the scales were being loosened and she was going to have new vision. Well, and when you, um, you asked uh, Jennifer, who was with you, to yeah. touch her, and when she put her hand on her she forehead, put her, put her finger like on her forehead, mm -hmm. the girl just about fell out. Yeah, I had to, I had to back <laughs> off. I had to pull back because we can't do that. It would have caused a, a lot of things. It probably would have done a lot of things. <laughs> so, so what you need to understand is we're navigating around pimps, yeah. uh, agents, mm -hmm. uh, people that are in uh, that are security or bouncers. Yeah, uh, we're navigating around um, all these different people that are watching. Yeah. all the time to make sure that these girls are not being um, assaulted or they're being touched wrong mm -hmm. or whatever. And, you know, we're, we're the dream interpreters. And you know what's interesting is that uh, in the past, um, there had been Christian booths in there, I mean, overtly yeah. Christian, right? So they had Jesus Loves Porn Stars, they have, you know, New Testaments, they have, uh, you know, different uh, booths that were you know, prayer board, you know, that kind of thing. And those, again, were not there. Mm -hmm. They did not allow, it seems like. And these are people that have money. These are people mm -hmm. that come in and they spend their money, they raise their money or whatever. These are groups of Christians that come in and they want to be av available, you know, to these people. Uh, in, but in, in very outspoken Christian ways. And because of that, uh, they were not allowed to come in. So, you know, when, when we talk about going into a wolf land or we're going into a, a places where, you know, it's uh, we're sheep among wolves and you need to be wise as serpents. Um, and I, I talk about this in words that work. That's why I shared it because so many people go, well, you have to say Jesus. No, you don't. Jesus didn't even say Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so I explain that because they're, they feel him. They feel his presence. They know he's not, we're not psychics. Mm -hmm. They know that. They have something to contrast it to. But we get in. And the reason we get in is because we're dream interpreters. Mm -hmm. Because we're going in to give back. We're going in to give something for free away. And so um, it, it works. <laughs> it yeah, works. It really does. And if we'd have done it any other way, uh, they would have shut us out. They would have not given us passes to get in. Yeah. I often describe what we go in and we do as uh, we're the drop of water that activates the seed where praying grandmas and other yeah. people have uh, planted. And we go in and we actually bring just a touch enough to activate that seed and get things moving in their lives. We're, we're like step three, right? I mean... It, Life is a, it's a progression. Everything is a process and we are just part of the process. Yeah. We don't go in there with guns blazing and telling people that, you know, you're going to go to hell because that's not really 
productive in that environment. No. It really is not. No. And, you know, that we have certain things we have to watch. The, these people are here, uh, they're under contract. This is how they make their money. Um, anybody who's done any kind of outreach into strip clubs or anywhere else like that, you know you don't go pulling on the girl that's on stage. You try to talk to the people that are around. And you know, God will provide the opportunity mm -hmm. and you'll get your chance, but you have to you have to maintain the right to talk to them. Yeah, you have to earn the right mm -hmm. to talk to them because mm -hmm. their trust bridges are blown up. Absolutely. They don't have any trust bridges mm -hmm. and so they don't uh, trust you. Mm -hmm. And um, so our thing is, you know, Jesus said, I, it, it's my will that no man should perish, right? Well, in order to do that, you have to be able to gain um, access to them through love, through uh, acceptance, right where they are, um, and, and not try and be Holy Spirit to them and change them. Mm -hmm. And so when once they find out that you're not coming at them, you're not shaming them, you're not making them feel horrible, you're giving them a future and a hope, mm -hmm. and you're giving them something to reach out for, and you're demonstrating um, a different side or a way that they've understood Jesus. They, in fact, it was interesting. They, they know that you're Christian. They know oh, we are. Yeah. They know we are. Yeah. And we, we are a stark contrast to everything else in there. Mm -hmm. uh, but they don't, they're, they're receiving because we aren't putting our finger in their face or trying to correct them or bring any kind of correction. We're gentle. Uh, we're gentle with them. And so then, then we see them again. You know, and again, and again, we're in there four, four days. Mm -hmm. And so they're just like, oh my goodness. I mean, um, you know, there were a, a few videos that when we get this put together, because we have to do the editing and then we'll tell the story behind the encounter so that mm -hmm. you can see. I want to thank you for your prayers because yeah. we really felt them. Yes. I know some of you were very much uh, on it when I did the first video and said it was just hard. It was like... It was um, it was much darker, in my opinion, uh, from the years past, and so uh, you know we're just up against a lot of things. And I also talked about showing up. When you just show up, God shows up with you, yeah. and you don't sometimes have to say a thing. He just knows. Yep. They know that you're <laughs> you're carrying a power uh, from you know from God. You're you're carrying something different. It's a light. Yes, and they're drawn to it. And so, um, you know, we, we are in uh, waters that have been quite different. Yeah. Uh, we're in a whole new era. We're in a whole new mindset. We're, these kids, uh, some of them don't know anything mm -hmm. about God. I think uh, Barna did a research, George Barna did a research that said, this is the first generation that is literally, definitely post-Christ. Mm -hmm. They don't know anything about God. And if they do, they don't like what they know. Yeah. because of the way possibly they've been treated or maybe some Christians have whatever, you know. So God's challenging us. You need to hear me. And I know that some of you don't agree with it, but you're not out there either. <laughs> you're not going out where we are. So you're not even taking. So yeah, we, we've already proven this to be true. And God's teaching us a brand new way of reaching a generation that are very hardened, that are very uh, blinded mm -hmm. by the enemy. And he's, he's coming in a way that we didn't, uh, I've never experienced God coming in a way that he's coming. And he's, he's getting a hold of the ones he loves, right? Because he loves them more than we love them. He, he knows them, their whole story, and we don't know that. And so he's, he's teaching us. We're learning how to hear what he says and how he wants us to communicate with people. And, um, and so we're not taking cheap shots, right? Mm -hmm. So anyway. Um, Your touch is super important. Yeah. That's one thing. Um, maybe we should amend or change words that work to just things that work. Because it's not <laughs> always, it's you don't true. always have to say anything. Mm -hmm. One of the most powerful things that I have um, is touch. And um, the Lord really worked with me on that last year. He just mm -hmm. had me go in and uh, I would actually have to do the opposite Thing of what the crowd was doing when I would enter a worship service. He was doing a personal work in me. If people were being very solemn and kind of stoic, he would make me get a little wild and crazy. And when they were being wild and crazy, he would make me sit and listen for him. And it really trained me to hear his voice. Mm -hmm. And so one thing that I do with these girls, I'll go in, I'll put my hands on them and I say, now I'm going to hold your hands and I'm going to stand here in silence until it gets weird. Mm. I don't have to say or do anything. 
I'm yeah. literally the conduit. Right. And when they're open like that, they will receive something. Mm -hmm. And that was the case with the girl who the scales were falling off of her eyes. Yeah. And so, I mean, she had a complete shift. I left there like high on Jesus as a kite. I was like, wow, that was incredible. And my partner was also Jennifer. It was one of the most incredible encounters I've had in there. Yeah. Um, but your touch is very important and you don't always have to say any, sometimes your silence is, um, just as incredible. I, uh, I run with a bunch of crazy worship cats all over the place. And one time we did this silent exercise and there was a frequency that was in the air and they stopped and they were checking it and it matched with B. In the silence, it's just B and he is. Hmm. Okay. So just remember your touch is important. Yeah. It was kind of funny there, you know, these uh, people that work in the industry, they're just programmed mm -hmm. to do all kinds of things. You know, they're, yeah. they're programmed to, act like, uh, you know, they're, they're trying to be sensual and, and they're trying to pose and do all these different things. And one of our uh, girls, one of the people on our team, <laughs> she went to give a hug to a girl and the girl's, you know, like, oh my gosh, I just, you know, and she's all acting sexual. Yeah. And I turned to the girl and said that it's not that kind of hug. Yeah, and then she goes, oh, oh, she completely shifted into she a did. different person. She did, it was her whole life yeah. demeanor mm -hmm. changed. And I said, this is a mom hug. Yeah. <laughs> it's not just oh hug. sorry and right then, yeah so it was that kind of breaking through the stigma and the mindset and the preconceived thoughts you know of what they what they think you're there for yeah. I remember the first time one of the well I guess I'd been in there maybe five years and one of the girls said to me well you've seen my videos and you're like <laughs> sorry no. my face said it I was like oh. I said I, I'm not into porn <laughs> No. And she goes, well, why are you here? And I said, I'm here for you. <laughs> you guys, like, they're in there. They are in there. We had a lady that I talked to. I read her tattoos. She mm -hmm. said, don't judge me. One of them was, uh, take me as I am and don't judge me. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I said, well, tell me about your tattoos. And she said, oh, it's just from the denomination church I came from. And I was like, oh, okay. We had another lady. She said, oh, I'm a prophet, but I know I'm not supposed to. Um, I can't prophesy until I'm out of sex work. I mean, we ran into church people, they're broken, they're hurting. So watch your connections. You guys, you guys are, um, you're the pastors to these people. Yeah, it's true. I mean, you're their friends, their family, mm -hmm. tread lightly. If you find out, work on your poker face. If you find out that they're doing something that is not in line with the word, pray for them more than what you say to them. Yeah. Because they are wounded and they feel rejected. Um, you can think it's wrong all day. I can think it's wrong all day. But but really, Jesus loved people. He didn't beat them up. He made made like a small statement of truth to them. But he didn't he didn't beat them up. No. Well, you think about the multitude. You know, he spoke to them on mountainsides and family units, and um, he didn't. He says he. Uh, he spoke to them in stories or parables, and it says, and then it goes on to say, without one, he didn't speak to them at all. Yeah. So you know, we we learn from his example of what mm -hmm. he did and how he how he was able. Even the woman caught in the very act of adultery, he didn't speak, get down there and and judge her and put her, you know, tell him uh, or tell her that you know she's wrong and this and that and whatever. Um, it, it, he loved her. He, in fact, he took on the ones that were accusing her. Yeah. And then he said, I don't judge you either. And then he says, go and just sin no more. Don't do it. And that act of forgiveness and that act of not judging and that act of, oh my gosh, I'm accepted right where I'm at. Yeah. Um, caused her to change. And, um, and so I, I just feel like we're in this whole new learning territory where we are definitely moving into a, a time where God wants us to do it his way. Mm -hmm. If I can tell you anything, God wants you to do it his way. He wants us to do it his way, not our way. He wants us to do it his way. Mm -hmm. And when we do, uh, it has a tremendous results and he takes it from there. Okay. Mm -hmm. He takes it from there. That was one of the biggest uh, things that Tim said to me, my husband, we go to Burning Man. Well, once they get born again, because we have a lot more freedom at Burning Man than mm -hmm. we do in a porn convention because we are not watched constantly, right? Yeah. Um, so when they would get born again, which they would because they would feel the presence of God, they would speak in tongues, they would fall over, 
they had encounters with Jesus, they did. Then they asked, what is this? And mm -hmm. we told them. And Tim's thing was, well, what do you do with them? You know, like, what do you, how do you, how do you uh, disciple them? And I said, well, I'm not, I, I didn't bring them into our tent. The Holy Spirit did. Mm -hmm. And God has other people in, the, in their lives. He divinely directs their path into the life of someone else who will take them the next step. Yeah. So we feel like we have to seal the deal. We feel like we have to be the one to disciple. We have to be the one to, you know, you don't have to do any of that. You do your part That's right. and God will bring in others. Yes. Now we're working on uh, leaning toward that or uh, engaging in and how to bridge that gap. Mm -hmm. um, we do have certain social media accounts. If you find it, I will not allow you to follow me. Sorry. It is, <laughs> it is simply to honor them and respect them. And when we have these encounters with them, um, we do keep the communication open and we ask them to reach back out. Yeah. And if we can continue working on that and bridging that gap with us and them, they will seek out the right church. They will start hearing from the Lord. Yes. We, you know, it's really not, it's not our place to make that happen. Now, if they ask us to, we will mm -hmm. absolutely do that. But yeah. what we're there to do, like I said before, is to drop water on those seeds and try to see what sprouts from that. Right. Yeah. And it does. Mm -hmm. And some remembered us from a, a couple years ago. They're still in the industry. Yeah. Uh, but we, I think our, my main thing is when I say, well, I read dreams and I read people. And they want both. Yeah. And then when I'm able to say, well, here's what I see about you. Mm -hmm. Here's what you've settled for, but here's what you're made for. Right. And it, it plants that seed. It waters that seed. It gives them something. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. This is why. What What am I doing? Yeah. You know, what are you doing with your life? You mm -hmm. know, how long do you want to stay in this? Because this is what you're ma ma made to do. This is what you're called to do. Many of them are called to help in medical Mm -hmm. ways they have had oh my uh, gosh yes. yeah right yeah. I mean they they want to help people they want to help hurting people yeah so there's just so much that we're learning as we go out I met some that are teaching children how to play instruments like oh, classically wonderful. trained but they're classically trained and they're doing it they're doing it clean they're they're living in a place where they were wounded and they're trying to make an impact and there's a lot of people in the church that aren't doing that, right? Yeah. I mean, we have to we have to walk that out too. So yeah. go and volunteer. Find out where these people are in your community. Yeah. It will come up mm -hmm. eventually. You'll discover it. Some girl walks in with a dinosaur mask on her face and says that <laughs> she was just doing her other job. I mean, who knows, you know? Well, yeah. And the other thing is they will ask you questions. Mm -hmm. Once they see that you're safe mm -hmm. and that you're a safe place and you're not, you know, shaming or judging them. They'll ask you questions. Mm -hmm. Then you just answer the question. Be a safe place. Yeah, exactly. Just be a safe and place. that's probably the number one thing we've learned. I mean, I want that. Yeah. I want that for myself. I want a safe place. Mm -hmm. I want a place where if, you know, when I was messed up way back years ago as a teenager, I, want, I wanted a safe place. I wanted somebody that could listen to me and not judge me and not make me feel worse about myself than I already do. Mm -hmm. uh, there was uh, one of our team members, she shared it a little bit. She said that she was in uh, the room with uh, the young men. There mm -hmm. was a men's room and there was a women's room. Mm -hmm. And so there were a lot of men that were in the sex industry and a lot of them are in the gay and li uh, li um, gay VN. Yeah. Gay VN, yeah, exactly. Gay VN. Mm -hmm. And, um, she had an opportunity to, to talk with her, him and he opened right up to her and he said, out of all these people in here, in this room, I am the least um, uh, traumatized. I'm the least abused. abused. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was the, I'm the least I'm abused the least out of abused. This, the people in this room. Mm -hmm. And I thought he, that he volunteered that information. Yeah. We didn't have to ask him. He, she didn't have to ask him. And uh, so we're getting a, a window in, okay? Mm -hmm. We're getting a window into what God sees and how he, he and, and again, remember I told you before in, in many different uh, podcasts and in the book and everything is uh, when Jesus can trust you with his friends, he'll, he'll introduce you to them. That's right. He'll introduce you to his friends because these are his friends. Mm -hmm. And so... We wanted just to give you a, a little bit of an update. You will have video. We did get some encounters, and we want to protect them as well. But we also want you to see that the field is ripe, man. The field is ripe, and we just have to learn how to do this God's way. Yeah. And then he will bring us the people that he, he knows that, that they can be 
redeemed. They can they can have a whole brand new life. God says He makes all things new, all yeah. things. That means everything that they ever walked in are com it's completely washed away, and He makes all things new. So, mm -hmm. um, and it, it was it was it was a challenge, mm -hmm. but we felt your prayers. And when we yeah. went on there the second day and said, "This is hard." This is hard. It's hard emotionally. It's hard. I was like ready to cry almost mm -hmm. every single day. I mean, every morning I got up and I was like, okay, I got to pull it together, you know, because um, I got to hear like, God, you got to, you got to give me your love because I don't have it. And there were a couple times I just wasn't even in there. I just let the team go in because um, I was like, I was struggling emotionally mm -hmm. with some of the stuff, some of the things I heard and that kind of thing. And, and I've been around in this for a little bit. I've been yeah. doing these types of ministries, but this one was very, I could tell the depth of darkness that was so much deeper than what I have experienced in other venues and places that we go. Mm -hmm. I also want to tell you that we're not just doing porn events. We're not just doing Burning Man events. We're doing New Age events. We're doing film festivals. We're doing fest a little carnivals and different things, any kind of thing that we can do. We want to train you to do it. I have a lot of people say, can you do this? Can you bring this uh, Freedom Lounge to this event or that event? And I'm like, I'm going to train you and then you're going to take people out and you're going to learn because God's going to teach you according to the way you learn and your personality and all of these uh, things. And so when people have done that and they've used even just some of the um, things that we've put out, out there, just we just tried things. In fact, this next year we were thinking maybe we should have a booth in there where we have oil mm -hmm. because it gives us if we if we have a booth and we can rub oil on them we get an opportunity to not just touch them but to do all kinds of 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 cleansing we get to do all kinds of ministry on our own turf like it's at our own booth so they come to us and then we can watch, I mean, we've watched this happen before where we've seen people who were in uh, cutting, be they cut because they're hurting. And so they cut and so we put the oil on them and you just ask for brand new life to come into them mm -hmm. and their scars clear up. Mm -hmm. And so it is, a, it is a miracle that that happens. And so we're, we're deciding on which way do we go with this, you know, in, in the future days and not just to keep doing the same thing over and over again, but to, to find other things, things that come into our mind, creative ways of reaching into different places where we're sent. So, um, I just want to thank you guys for yes. praying, for supporting us, for your, you know, your gifts financially to us to help us go. We really used it, needed it. Mm -hmm. And it was so amazing what, what, we felt, I'm telling you now, we felt your prayers. We felt your prayers. To hear more about training, to know more about training, go on my website, cindymcgill.org, cindymcgill.org, dot org. <laughs> and uh, there is a whole thing there about how you can uh, host a learn and launch and how you, and it's a full day training. Um, is it on video? It will be, but it'll only be on video for people that don't live in this country. Okay, yeah. or if you are 100% unable to get to where we are, because touch it, matters, and we do impartation there, and we in in the anointing is transferred through association. Yeah. That's why we do them in person, and we want to be able to equip you to answer your questions. Every uh, arena is different. Every state is different. Every yeah. area is different, and so what works in our state may not work in your state. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we want to be able to be sensitive to what. Um, how how it's best for you guys to be trained right and and to gather people together and um, and and I'm telling you it's 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 addicting and it's life changing mm -hmm. so that's why we keep doing what we do and I mean my daughters were even like mom you've been doing this for like 30 years why don't you just give it up and give it to other people to do and I go I I am training other people mm -hmm. but I just love to see the encounter I love to see them get touched. I love, it just does something. It just changes you. It, it just makes you know how much God loves you too. So, mm -hmm. all right. So we love you guys. And yeah. again, thanks Abby for mm -hmm. going. Abby was, she was like my right arm. I mean, <laughs> beyond my right arm. She was like <laughs> heading it up at times. 
when I'm sitting out there going, I can't, I gotta have a, I have to have a Perrier and Lime and just sit here for a second, you know, and <laughs> try and figure out what I'm doing. It's so, okay. um, but, uh, so, but the team was wonderful. It was yes. a very small team. We oh, don't yes. take big teams in. So, love um, you, Gina. Yeah, I love you, Gina. <laughs> and, um, so we just uh, we just want to say thank you. Yeah. CindyMcGill.org. Sign up for the shout. You can get all the stuff coming up. We have an Austin one coming up in February, the end of February. Um, and I think we're going to do South by Southwest. I think we're going to go on the streets and do some stuff out there. There's been a number of people from there who went to Burning Man, so they get it and they understand it. Uh, the, re the requirements are uh, you have to uh, have 50 people at least. You have to read words that work before I get there. Because I don't want you, I don't want to have to go over it again. Yeah. And then um, we want you to be willing to be taught. I don't want to fight with you about things that you think when you've not even been out there doing it. And mm -hmm. I'm saying that in love, but I'm just telling you, you know, don't don't try and correct our methods because you haven't done what we've done. You haven't been where we've been. And you haven't seen what we've seen, and you haven't listened like to God on in places that we've gone like we have. So we're just training you the way God trained us. Yeah. So at CindyMcGill.org, you can also get Cindy's dream teachings. Yeah. You can do that online. Yeah. Those are recorded, mm -hmm. the first two. You can do some live with me if you want. Yeah. She um, does the, Abby does the advanced dreams and she does the dream forum. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, those are real helpful resources and they're, they're cool because you can ask questions and mm -hmm. you can uh, get interaction, you know, back and forth. And yeah. so again, we just want to, we just want to train you guys, whatever <laughs> we've done. Do you think I could put glitter and anointing oil for the table? Yes, I think <gasps> glitter would be great. We'll refract the light. We'll, <laughs> you know, like the moon See? does the sun, we'll just you know, just I, see light. With this stuff. I see light in you. You're going to reflect the mm -hmm. light into the world. Yeah, that's well, true. I like it. I like it too. We'll work on it tomorrow. Cindy doesn't like to craft. <laughs> I get, I have anxiety going into, where's that story tape me? Hobby, Hobby Lobby. Lobby. I'm like, oh, I can't, I just, I, I can't. Yeah. It's not me. She runs out. I screaming, run out. Crying. I run out. Yeah. Needing a Perrier in line. <laughs> Anyway, we love you guys. All right, talk to you later. Bye. I can't. I can't push. <laughs>